Good morning and welcome to Off the Press. This is the program where, as always, we take a look at our national dailies and make sense of it. And with me to do so this morning is uh, Baba Shola Adigui, who is a public affairs analyst. Thank you for joining me this morning. Yeah, it's a pleasure. And to see you here, it's the last day of 2019. Yeah, we can I'm only be grateful. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are here today to say so. So we shall begin with the Punch newspaper. Uh, we have a couple of them here, but let's just begin with the Punch newspaper. And I know it will be displayed soon for you. And it says, uh, Iswap threat, or I swap threat, governors want Buhari to suspend troop withdrawal. That's the big story for the Punch newspaper. Aside, of course, they are good. Uh, they are the uh, good news of uh, winning uh, for the Dame Awards. Okay, so gas reduction stores 1,109 megawatts uh, electricity generation on page 25. Uh, IOCs delay $58.4 billion oil gas uh, projects in Nigeria on page 25 as well. And then just beneath that headline is, don't withdraw soldiers now, Autumn Beck's federal government. Uh, withdrawal premature says Ishaku, we want reinforcement in northeast, according to Fin3, and we will still need troops in Zampara, according to the governor there. And then we have picture story of students of Lagos State University in procession to mourn the killing of a 400-level uh, student of the institution, Favor Oladili by ritualist in Ikira Ocean State. That's a very st sad story there, but we can see picture story uh, depicting that. Now, you risk being jailed, ex-AG once Ibadan sacked Obas on page 11. And Interpol arrests Edo Commissioner for alleged $2 million uh, laundry, and that's on page 11. Labor issues 14-day ultimatum over planned equity sackings, and that's on page 38. Also, Ondo community rejects 200 Fulani headsmen with weapons, on page 5. I was paid 210,000 naira to slaughter last student, uh, Kila Pastor confesses. Such a sad story. And it's contained on pages 4 and 5 of uh, the Punch newspaper. Now, Buhari alone can't be blamed for Nigeria's debt. According to the federal government, and that story is on page seven now. Baba uh, Shola, which one do you agree with and which do you disagree with or which one is catching well, your attention? <laughs> first one, I agree with uh, the governors okay. telling the, the federal government not to withdraw uh, the troops. Just yet. And um, because for me, I don't understand why the federal government actually wants to do that, to withdraw. Is, is it that the federal government is claiming there is no more insecurity mm -hmm. in the country or... Uh, they believe that where the insecurity in the company can be managed by the Nigerian police. Mm. I don't understand. But as far as I'm concerned, uh, although it's been a while that I heard of a, uh, what's it called, attack within the country as it mm. used to be, mm -hmm. maybe the government has actually uh, suppressed that uh, particular side or they have killed the news so that it will not go out of... Uh, for people, for the public to hear, well, you get. So I if cannot it's say somehow we yeah, should but know. it's still happening, but mm -hmm. not at it used to be. Mm -hmm. But uh, for now, I think the federal government, what the federal government is to do now is to is total eradication mm -hmm. of insecurity within country because insecurity actually brings uh, a lot of uh, discouragement even mm -hmm. to investors, talk less of sure. the people within the country. Mm -hmm. So I agree with the governor telling federal government not to do that. To hold but, fire. To, yes, let them continue until we are sure that uh, there is no threat of insecurity anywhere within the country. Mm -hmm. And I also want to make mention of the, um, the $85 billion yeah. loan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, the federal government is claiming that the $5 billion is there is no cause for alarm, that everything is fine, that what, what has happened so far is that the federal government, as in Buhari federal government for 2015, actually inherited about $65 billion from mm -hmm. the past government. Mm -hmm. There is no issue. Now, you already have 25 bit, so for between 2015 and 2019, and just of recent, another $30 billion been has heard. been approved by the National Assembly for what? federal government to secure, mm -hmm. you get. So, in other words, it's going to increase from 85 billion to what's it called, the 30, then by the time you look at it, it's about 115 mm -hmm. billion dollars. Well, and it's if going you, to be 100, and, because you say 80 and then 30, so it's going to be about 100. That's, that's 115, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, by, if you look at the budget, 
the budget already shows about, I think, about two point something deficit. Mm -hmm. So the two point something deficit is actually a debt also that will be incurred by the federal government next year. There is no way it will not affect the economy. Mm -hmm. Don't be surprised that by this time, by, by, by this time next year, the naira would have been devalued again. You think so? Yes, because if we are, if the if if the debt is increasing, then we need to look for a way to service this debt. Mm -hmm. You get, we need to look for a way to service this debt. And for any foreign company or anybody bringing in foreign currency into company, it wants to know your debt. And if the company knows, if the country knows your debt, then that is we determine if it worth it mm -hmm. for that particular country to invest in your country. Or not. You get it. So if, the, if 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 they have to do, they, they will have to look at the value of the dollar to a naira for them to take that decision of mm -hmm. investing in, in that country. country. So that's number one. The number two aspect I want to make mention of, yes, he said that um, the total uh, local debt, that is uh, the internal debt, yeah. I compare with the internal debt. That that is no, debt. As far as I'm concerned, the internal debt is talking about has to do with individual contractors mm -hmm. who, as in one way or other, contributed to the development or do unseen development within the country. Oh, this is unseen development. It's, as far as I'm concerned, I've not seen development that I've not seen development that uh, 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 that would have so incurred okay. that would have incurred such amount of money in trillions. Mm. You get it. So, so what you say is not commiserate. Is the kind that is, taken. You, excuse me, speak. so I have not seen that, but. It has to do with about individual. In other words, some families have been denied of their income. Some families are, are some companies have been, in one way or the other, have been affected mm. by the, uh, this uh, debt. So the federal government has to do something, or else the insecurity we are talking about will continue mm. and most likely go on rise because you have increased the VAT, you have increased some back charges uh, to stamp duties, and it is going to hit the pocket of the people. Mm. And before you know it, people will start reacting. Mm. Thank you. I mean, I like the way you've put it in context, you know, so we see how these things affect us. All right. Um, we would, because we have someone in studio for sports, we'll go to the next paper very quickly. Okay. And we have this day, uh, federal government plans faced withdrawal from internal security operations. Buhari charges service chiefs to ensure peaceful society in the new year. We just a couple of hours into the new year. Uh, that story is on the front page where it's continued, as you can see, already displayed on your screen on page eight. Malami accuses Fallon of mischief over the Suki's release. That story is on page five. Uh, Nigeria moves against hasty adoption of ECO, uh, says it's studying the situation. That's the, the, the currency. Why nations be moved against hurried approval of single currency that has been uh, talked about here. That story is on the front page, but again, it's continued on page eight. And court orders uh, Deaths Foist 33 rerun by elections on INEC. Another lawmaker dies in Sokoto, sadly. On the front page there. And then reaching out to elders, we have some picture story of, of course, some elders, as they, they put it here. And the federal government lists gains in economy tackling insecurity, corruption as 2019 achievements on page six. We just talked about insecurity, so do you agree? This is, I mean, it's an achievement for the federal government. Well, you know, I made mention of something the other time. Mm -hmm. it's, either we are no, it's either we are no longer hearing the news or the government has achieved something because okay. Is not as it used to be. Okay. You get my point. Mm -hmm. I can say that based on the information I have, mm -hmm. you get my point. So I, I, I would say in that aspect, yes. You can say that the scale is reduced, yes. so to speak. So if you are to look at the corruption, well, as far as I'm concerned, if they are calling it, talking about the corruption, fighting the corruption, maybe they are referring mm -hmm. to about the three, about the three governors that, mm -hmm. have, that, that have been jailed this year. You get my point. But the question now is, yes, you have jailed about three. What, in what way can we compare that with the stealing that has happened within the system, within this particular year? Mm. You get my point. So what has the government done to reduce corruption in the system? Yeah, if that is what they are looking at, if, if jailing three governors is an achievement to them, but for us, it's not an achievement because there are a lot of people outside there mm -hmm. that have been, that have appeared in court for several times that are yet to be 
are convicted mm -hmm. of the crimes or allegations leveled against them. Mm -hmm. So I think the third one there, they made mention of... Security. Uh, uh, okay, and I've made mention... Gains economy. Well, for the gains in economy, <laughs> I have not seen gains in economy. Mm -hmm. if, we, if we are talking of gains in economy, then it must... I mean, we to be we have to compare base. 2019 with 2018. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you a lot of people are actually grown this year even more than 2018. So for me, I've not seen any gain in economy, and that is the truth. Mm. How about uh, uh, insecurity? Yeah, I've not mentioned of insecurity. Somehow, yes. Yes, you, you somehow. Have, you agree to some extent. extent. But... <laughs> <laughs> so I cannot say much about so that. So you're giving them a fair pass? I can oh. give them, in total, I cannot give them 50%, definitely. So 40, I, I would just 45? Say, I would just say about 20, 25. Well, we hope that's we'll on that. 50, 50. But if we are looking at the roads, okay, I uh, will say the federal government has in one way improved on the roads. Okay. They are actually working on the roads, most especially the federal roads we have mm. in the country. I can see some improvement compared to what it used to you be. You know, it's end of year, so yes. everyone is trying to take stock. So for <laughs> you, it's good to also see that there are sites of improvement, yes. there are places who've done well, yeah. and there are places that you can do better. All right, thank you so very much. So, okay, all right, let's go away from that story. Is there another intervention? Because this. Yeah. this for that echo, different... for the echo currency, uh, they've been on it for a very long time. I think the echo work, yes. echo work country, they've been single on currency it. for but the so echo work. Uh, the the uh, anglophone countries mm -hmm. uh, now decided to have a single adopt the so-called echo currency, whereby the echo work countries are yet to agree mm -hmm. on a lot of factors for them to adopt that. So Niger I think that is a good move for Nigeria for we them are not thinking to, it through. Yes. Until the factors, until, until those things that are required are met, I don't think Nigeria should go uh, uh, adopt the same eco currency, just like what happened with, with euro currency and GBP. UK did not in any way adopt the euro currency, I believe, uh, but other countries actually uh, adopted it and they were actually using it. So and it was as a result of some things that the uh, UK um, so that made them to withdraw from the euro currency. Mm -hmm. But if Nigeria is doing the same thing, I think before they can I start say yes or no, they need to think. We should cross it. our T's and dot our yeah. I's and properly. Introducing the equal currency does not mean that we're eradicating the Naira. No, not? no, of course. So no, it doesn't. It's just, it's a, just a single currency, currency. for the echo yes. clause. Okay, so let's go to Vanguard newspaper in the interest of time. Uh, it says Nigeria flies uh, 461 billion naira worth of gas in 2019. That story is on page 20. And insecurity, uh, federal government plans to withdraw military from northeast in 2020, which we've already talked about. So uh, Lagos lawmakers amend land use charge on page 10. Now, how revenue agencies fail to remit 1.6 trillion naira into federation accounts? Uh, that story also is on page 19 of the Vanguard newspaper. Killing of 11 Christians, Ohaneze, Pandev, and Afenifere, ACF accused federal government of negligence. Uh, they said the action is barbaric, according to Khan, ICC, Nigerians in Diaspora, and others. Um, they're asking that address security issues, says PFN. Uh, persecution agenda exists, according to Afenifere, still on the same matter. And that story, you can find it on page five of the Vanguard newspaper. Nigeria studying francophone currency uh, name change to ECO on page eight. And then Showares release Malami accuses Fallon of mischief on page eight. An APC crisis, 10 governors rally behind Oshomale. No man is God in Edo politics, says Edo APC chair Ojezua on page 35. And Lagos Assembly passes, 20, uh, passes year 2020 budget of 1.168 trillion naira on page 10. Now, anxiety on Do community over occupation by 200 Fulani herdsmen on page 14. The other paper says uh, they were not uh, allowed to come in, but well. So here we have it. Um, which one do we start? Well, on the, we take the, care? The, what do we on do? the on to 200, I, I can't imagine why a truck of about 200 herdsmen with weapons with weapons moving from one location to a particular community. I think the federal government needs to look at that. And as I think the unit actually done a good job by rejecting such mm -hmm. because there must have been there must uh, there, there must be an ulterior motive for that 200 to a community that is not even up to how many. And one thing about all these people, uh, the full men, like they say, just, they they mentioned, they usually go along with their weapons. Um, unfortunately, Which is quite different because as someone who was born in the north and growing up, my image of the Fulani herdsman or herdsman is 
usually they have a stick, you know, the normal stick. They usually they... have stick and they usually have sword. Yeah, but not like the kind of weapon. The kind sword that is a we've weapon. Seen. Yeah, but not guns for of instance, course they the didn't mention whether it's gone or whatever mm. even if this even if it was called the cutlass they said that the people will call it weapon, weapon. Okay. you get it. so they will not mention the kind of weapon not even gone i'm, I'm very sure it's not gone it's mm. either sword or knife or whatever they actually saw with them mm. and nevertheless let's even put aside the weapon mm -hmm. while going to a particular community 200 from somewhere and you're moving to a small community to go and relocate, uh, settle down there, there is something. Mm -hmm. There is something about <laughs> there is something about that relocation. Mm -hmm. So the government, the governor of the state, needs to look at that. Then, it's worrying. Uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's very very sad. So and uh, uh, for the revenue agency mm -hmm. that the federal government mentioned of that song, I looked at it. I, I went actually went to it, and um, they are only justifying why. It, will, it actually reduced, not as expected, because they made mention of so MDPR, they made mention of FIRS, and it was as a result of the excess they had on their royalty, which, of course, made sense, because according to the law guiding all those things, mm -hmm. there are some excesses you have to de uh, deduct from uh, whatever you are remitting to the federal account. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it has sense. Then the killing of 11, yeah. we can, 11 Christians. You can imagine that 11 people were killed and then what the federal government is thinking about now is to withdraw the troops. The troops. It doesn't add up. So mm. the gov federal government were tired of accepting condolence messages. Let's do a lot about mm. this ISWAP Boko Haram or whatever name they have adopted. Let's do something about it. These people are human beings. Mm. People, the, in your intelligence, try to equip them with necessary, uh, what's it called, equipment materials or whatever they need for them to do their work. Equip them mm. so that this thing will come to ground zero if possible. If possible. Because this is still an indi indication that yes. we have huge security challenges there. All right, so we'll go to Daily Sun, um, and it says group slams minister over suspension of Bet's boss, Mbet boss, on page three, eighty-four billion uh, dollar debt. FD insists no cause for alarm, which is what we've already talked about. Insecurity government uh, to withdraw troops from volatile sports in twenty twenty, uh, which we're still talking about. As Boko Haram hits another Borno village, uh, raises school church. Twenty-seven attacks recorded in fourteen days by Boko Haram and Iswap, according to the federal government. There, now a man kills his own children and injures another in a Borno. Such a gru uh, gruesome story. On page. For Obasaki and Oshomale face off, Edo traditional rulers fix January the second for fasting and prayer. Yeah, they need uh, some spiritual intervention there. Now that's on page forty. Minimum wage, federal workers to enjoy areas. Um, that's on page eight. All right. So which they have almost the same. They story, have almost the same. Thing, but month. let's talk about the Oba Obasaki and Oshomale. Okay. I think on January the second, all the uh, all Nigerians need to go on fasting and Oh, prayer. we should join them in solidarity. Oh yes, in nice solidarity for because I don't know how a do we conduct election next day. Mm. There are a lot of challenges in respect of that. As Obaseki he is, 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 is welcomed, is supported by the people in Edo State, actually. Mm -hmm. Oshio Mele has an issue. If you are very close to Edo State, Oshio Mele has issues with Edo people. So most of them are not in support of whatever that is going mm -hmm. on. And if you look at the history of this, uh, their problem, it started for when Obaseki actually removed some commissioners from his cabinet, mm -hmm. and Oshio Mele reacted. And this, that's what the result of what we are seeing now. And the challenge Obaseki will have is this. Oshio Mele is the national chairman. Mm -hmm. INEC will only accept list of winners of primaries from the national chairman and not the state chairman. Mm -hmm. So the, the APC has to intervene in this issue before the next primary election that we hold in a, a do state. Or else, it will bring down the party. It's going to result to what happened in Zafara. Mm -hmm. Is it Zafara or Nasarawa? I can't remember again. It's going to result to the same thing. At the end of the day, they will not have any candidate. We can continue. We'll hope, well, uh, <laughs> we hope it doesn't go into there. And like you said, uh, we will join them in fasting and prayer. But unfortunately, that's all that we're going to take thank because you. we need to go to the sports section. But I want to say thank you very much uh, for being with us it's this a morning. Pleasure. All you. right. We'll take a quick break now. When we come back, we'll look at the sports news. We'll be back.
Welcome back. We're still on Off the Press. And now we are going to the sports section. And with me to take a look at the sports news is our in-house sports analyst, Destiny Onogboria. Good morning. Mouth doesn't kill someone. <laughs> I like your Definitely. name. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at sports news now. And um, complete sports, we have Ndidi ends as ends 2019 as best eagle in England. We have Abraham wants a new 180k pounds a week Chelsea deal. We have uh, Benzema extends real deal till 2022. Man City's EPL team of the decade and all of that. Um, then we have Dortmund open to 100 million pounds uh, Sancho offers and Man City's and um, Essien snobs Mikel picks Enyama and the rest of it. So please, uh, we have Four minutes or, uh, we, or less than that to talk of. So, <laughs> which one do you want to begin with? with? The match was three ones at kind of the money. <laughs> the money beats. Yeah, the money bags. Yeah. Maybe I should go to sports. So, look at the kind of money they <laughs> of are calling. Of course, should. At, at least some of the females, they are really making good money out of it. Okay, so, so let's uh, Manchester City, uh, the team of the decade. Wow, mm. that's a big story. Is it? Yes, because looking at how they started, uh, before 2012, the, the last time they won the league was in 1968. Mm. That's like... Children have been born, and some have even gotten married and have uh, yeah. grandchildren. Yeah. So 2012, and uh, they've not. Uh, some people actually want to say they should have given it to Liverpool. Looking at how how they started, uh, like since um, for three seasons now, mm -hmm. they've gone to Champions League back to back, and they won it once, and they were also in the um, um, in the Europa League finals. But looking at Man City's story here. In the 2010s, during the Manchester United era, mm -hmm. we had Chelsea. These guys, they were still batting out for the cup. But Manchester City's story is more different than that of Liverpool. Okay. Now, people are saying, why don't you just give it to Liverpool? You can't give it to Liverpool. These guys came out strong year in, year out. Even when Silas Ferguson was still disturbing them for the league, they came out strong 2010, 2011, up to 2018, last year. 2012, they won the league under... Um, under Roberto Mancini, 2014, just a year gap after United won the league. Mm -hmm. And they won it under Mane Pellegrini, 2017 and 2018. They still won the league. And they became the first team in England to win the three domestic trebles. Mm. And giving them this award, I think they deserved it. So you think it, they it's worth it? it. It's, it's, it's worth it. There, there's a record to that. Compared to Liverpool's 30-year drought of... Um, yeah, of the EPL, these guys they've worked, they've really worked hard to get to get this. I can see your excitement. All right, so which other stories? We'll take we'll well, move away at, from uh, that story. Let's yeah. go to this money bit. <laughs> yeah, that's the money phase. Mm -hmm. But I, I think we have to look at uh, Tamieba first. Okay, he's really he's a youngster, and um, I don't think you should be paying a second choice striker the amount of money, the, a less uh, a huge amount of money than the first choice striker. This guy is not even any close to 150. But yet, he's playing the number of games. Like, he's, mm. he has played in all of the games. And he's the highest goal scorer with 14 goals this season. So, if he's saying that he wants to be paired with um, Hudson Odoi, who is earning 180, mm -hmm. come on. This guy deserves more than that. He does. He's, a, he's ahead of Bashua. He's ahead of Giroud. And these guys, they are, they, are, they are eating the bench. Let me use that word. They are eating the bench. And he needs to get... because. Issues like this, they, they tend to create rift between players. Mm -hmm. Because I think uh, Poba and Sanchez, they had the same issue Manchester United. Uh, Poba was earning lesser than Sanchez, and Sanchez was not even playing the game. He was not adding value to the game. But Poba was playing his life out at Manchester United. So if this guy feels like... if And the, um, the transfer talk is practically down, because they don't want to listen to him, but they want him to keep playing. So I feel like they should give him at least 190. Okay. <laughs> yeah, one should be more All right, you're handing a 10 extra of to course, him. Of course, because he's tried. Okay. Come on, he scored the winner against Arsenal on Sunday. Or do I came in in the second half, but it was just, let us just change the game. So this guy, deserves his, he deserves the money. Okay, so uh, unfortunately, this is all that we can take, well, Destiny. Thank you, much, uh, thank you so thank very, you. very much for your analysis thank there. You. And let's see if he gets 190, as uh, you are saying. He's going to get more than that. <laughs> okay, and um, that's where we're going to call it a wrap today on Off the Press. Please join us again. We do this on a weekly basis, uh, basis Monday to Friday, 8.30, here on Plus TV Africa. I remain Amaka Oko. You have yourselves a good day.